Welcome to the Fish Fry. We're coming at you every Friday. My name's Courtney and I'm here with my co-host Eric. We are the two co-founders of Sour Fish Events. Last week we had the week off, so for Labor Day weekend we did not um, have an episode, but we had one the week before and it was all about the virtual run, so tune into episode number 20 to learn all about that and what it all entails. This week we have a really fun episode and it's super fitting with the fish fry vibe. Um, we're cracking open several cold ones as you can see in front of us. We are also filming this in a YouTube video so that's why I said that. But um, we should preface that this episode is meant for those of you who are 21 and older. So if you're not, please stop listening now and tune into some older episodes. Courtney, what are we cracking open exactly? We are cracking open some pumpkin beers. So this is going to be a pumpkin beer tasting, and I am so excited. Yeah, we've talked about this for quite some time. It's our favorite time of the year, obviously fall. And also just in the past couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of pumpkin beers start making appearances. So um, yeah, if, whether you're listening on the podcast or you're watching this on YouTube, get ready to get envious of us I guess because yeah. we're gonna taste a lot of good pumpkin beers and I just want to say we're doing this tasting from the Midwest in Ohio right now so uh, some of these beers may be more local to where we are and we might have to do another one of these later this season when we're you know back on the East Coast yeah I think um, that's just an excuse to do it again yeah. <laughs> this should be a fun episode um, but yeah I think going back to like the fish fr fish fry thing is you know we always say crack open a cold one we yeah. usually release this on friday so this is our our first one where we've actually had like a beer with it really or at least yeah, it's been a no beer. it's been a while we haven't we haven't had a we haven't had a pumpkin beer with any of them yet so True. Yeah. cool so yeah and again um if you are listening to the podcast and you're wondering why do they keep referencing like different colors or whatever it's because this is also going right onto youtube so if you prefer you can watch on youtube or just listen to the podcast um, but good. you can't taste them through either medium, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, so a quick kind of like housekeeping note of how this is going to work. We are only tasting pumpkin beers today. So around this time every year, there's tons of good Oktoberfest beers, other good seasonal beers. We decided instead of like mixing in all these fall beers, we're strictly going with pumpkin beers. Uh, we have a total of eight to try today. And as Courtney just said, there are so many good pumpkin beers out there. This is not what we think is a top eight in the country or world. This is us walking into a local craft beer shop, finding some pumpkin beers and putting them into our cart. So that's how we chose them. So we'll see. I know we have a couple we've tried before. So yeah, we I'm know like there's... staring at them. I'm like, ooh, what do we have Yeah, so there? we know there's some good ones and there's some what we've never had before. So we will see. Um, also, we want to rank these eight as we go along. So we're going to rank these using our jack-o'-lantern scale. <laughs> One jack-o'-lantern means we'll never drink this beer again. Hopefully we don't use this at all. And four jack-o'-lanterns mean we'll always drink that beer. So it's a scale of one to four. Um, half scores are acceptable. And kind of the idea is we don't want to work off of each other's like scores. So we'll probably do something along the lines of where we say like three, two, one, almost like rock, paper, scissors. We could like turn. Yeah. And like... We'll, sh we'll figure it out as we go. But um, we do want to make sure that we're not just like going off each other's scores. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and we'll kind of, we'll show on the YouTube video the beer that we're drinking, pour it in a clear glass, show it to you guys, and, you know, do, do, the, do the tasting. Let's we are not, uh, we're not Cicerones, we're not professional beer judges, we just like beer a lot. And we're coming from you like with like a common common folk approach. So yeah, again, we're not claiming to be professional beer judges or we beer do songs. drink it a lot though. That's true. Um, and one final little note: if you're gonna do this at home, which it would be great for you to do if you're over 21, definitely always be mindful that pumpkin beers tend to be a little higher in ABV. So I know some of these are like eight percent. So definitely stronger beers. You'll see us. We're going to be dumping them into our cups and then dumping them into this bowl um, just because we have a lot to get through. Yeah. So without further ado, I will circle around Check the table out. and get us our first beer. Do you want to introduce it? Yes. Ooh, this one looks good. OK, so this is the Southern Tier pumpkin but the cold brew version of this i have not had this one yet i've i've had the two in the middle the pumpkin and the warlock but um yeah i haven't tried this one i'm really excited for this 
Yeah, um, so Southern Tier, they're out of New York, right? Yeah, so they're um, Western New York, but they opened a brewery in Cleveland. I think they have one in Pittsburgh. And I just, I know they make a great pumpkin beer. So this one just has cold, is it brewed with a cold brew? Or? Yeah, re read the, is there a description on it? it? I can see, just so you guys know, it's 8.6%. So we're starting off with a starting rather strong. strong. Yeah. Um, there's not a description on the bottle. I think it was on the four pack we bought it in, but it's just a, it's an ale with natural pumpkin and coffee flavors. And um, honestly, from sitting here without, or standing here without even tasting it yet, I'm getting strong coffee shop smells. So. And I should, if you have listened to the podcast at all or know anything about me, I love cold brew. So this should be right up my alley. Yeah. So let's uh, cheers to kick this off. Cheers. All right. Careful. I don't want to make sounds. All right, do you want to give a do you want to give a score? 1 to 4? Yeah. All right. 3 2 1. You gave it a 4. Okay. So it's I, so I give it a good. 3. So Courtney walk us through your score, but what do you taste? Okay. What did you like about it? So initially just from the smell, like when I can like breathe it in, it strong coffee shop vibe, feeling that. Then upon tasting it, I just I taste the pumpkin, but I really also taste that coffee and I think when people might think like pumpkin coffee, you might think pumpkin spice latte or something really sweet, but I'm not getting any sweetness from this really beyond the pumpkin flavor. And I don't think pumpkin itself is really that sweet. So yeah, I like it. Yeah. I think it's really, really good. Um, I, I mean, three and a half is maybe where I would peg mine. I know you said we were going to dump these out, but I just drank. Yeah. All I mine. didn't pour that much into them, <laughs> but also it's our first one. So I think we were a little, uh, Dove right in. but i think it was really good um definitely a really solid beer that i'll drink again but i think i was expecting maybe a you know i'm so used to their southern tier pumpkin i was expecting something a little more boom in your face yeah there's more boom in your face with the coffee which is good i That's do great. i do love coffee obviously um but yeah good beer boom a little bit of cleaning oh that's a good idea there you go All right. Yep. All right. This is the Dogfish Head Pumpkin Ale. Eric, have you had this one before? Have you heard the? Oh, you, they can't hear you when you're around there. Have you had this one before? I think I've had it a long, long time ago. I mm -hmm. know Dogfish Head, a lot of people are familiar with it. Um, they're out of Dover. They're in Delaware, yeah. yeah. Dover, Delaware, or, or I know Delaware, at least. Yeah. Um, but they are like... Milton, Delaware. Milton, Delaware. They are kind of um, one of the pioneers in like the craft beer scene. Like a lot of people think of them and Sierra Nevada, you know, when they think of like who got like... I don't want to say who got the craft beer scene started in the U.S., but some of the people yeah. that rose quickest... Um, so, you know, kind of some they, of the OGs. Yeah. Some of the OGs, they make a lot of different beers. So I'm excited to taste this because I've had other beers of theirs and usually it's pretty good. This one clocks in at 7%. So a little less strong, which is good. So I'm going to put this back in front of the camera and go ahead. What are you tasting? Should we do our number first before we discuss, discuss it? Sure. Okay. One, two, three. Two? Yeah. I gave it a three, just so you folks know. What? You start us off. I'm not really tasting anything. Like, maybe the cold brew is ruining my taste. Should I have a sip of this water? This is... This is mm -hmm. not the same water we used to rinse out the glasses. This is this is drinking water. Let me try this again. I'm not tasting much. So it's very smooth. Um, 
which you can take that how you will. It's very smooth. When you put it up to your nose, you get some like toffee or caramel yeah. notes, um, very strong. And then I was expecting a lot of sweetness to this, and it's not really that sweet, which is good. Um, I gave it a three. I think this is a, a great I think it's definitely beer. like a drinkable beer. Um, I'm not saying it's not drinkable by any means. It's, um, I think I just smell more than I taste, and I don't know that I like that. I want that to be equal. Yeah, I think it's a fine beer. Maybe wash those and I'll get the next one. Mm -hmm. Let's rinse these out. Our first can. I should have grabbed a different water glass that my hand actually fits around to pour these. Sorry for all the random noises if you are just tuning in. All right, this one is the Mazhead Brewing Haunted Hayride Pumpkin Ale. And I've never had this, and I actually don't think that I've even had anything from Mazhead before because I, th I think they're pretty new. I'm not really sure, but they're in Cleveland, and honestly, I don't get to Cleveland that often. Um... But I like the description on the can. Read it. It says, fall on the north coast is the most nostalgic of, of the four seasons. As the days get shorter, the nights get cooler, and the leaves start to change, we're taken back to times telling ghost stories by a campfire, trick-or-treating, and hay rides at a pumpkin patch. There's a lot more, but, you know, we have <laughs> limited time. But I really like it. So um, it says, haunted hay ride is an amber ale brewed with pumpkin, cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. So... By this the description, I think I'll like it. So it's clocking in at what seven point three percent. Seven point three. Seven point three percent. And it's definitely the it's the darkest of all the ones we've had so far. All right, let's give the masthead a try. Can smell a lot more of the spices for sure. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the pumpkin was lacking. The last one. It had that toffee or caramel, but yeah, didn't have a lot of the spices, at least on the nose. Now I do sound like a beer snob. Sorry for that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know enough about beer that you you kind of act like one sometimes. Mm. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right, what three. do you, oh. you want to do? Yeah, scores. Three, two, one. We are different people. I gave it a two. <laughs> Courtney gave it a three. Um, I no, you know what? I think it's a it's a two and a half. Two and a half jack o' lanterns. Okay. Yeah, it's um, I'm not a big amber ale person as it is, but this one has that like that pumpkin flavor, the ginger, the pumpkin, like all the like the cinnamon. It. It helps it being an amber ale, but eh, it's not not my favorite. But I think it's better than the pumpkin one. Yeah, I thought. I mean, I know we Put don't usually. Back. Neither. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> neither of us really drink amber ales too much, um, and I know a lot of beers are amber ales, and that's fine. It just. The, it was one of the things where I smelled, I was like, oh, this is going to be really good. And yeah. then it, the body was just a little lighter than I like. Um, and it didn't really just, it didn't smack me in the face with like, hey, this is a pumpkin beer. I think you're going to like the next one. Well, let's, let's move let's, right let's on. Let's move right on to that. Cause this Courtney, is... you know, you know this beer. Tell us what it is. This is Southern Tier Pumpkin. It is the one we started off talking about. <laughs> um, and then the first one we tried was the cold brew version of this. So... I mean, it's a classic, and it's. I mean, maybe we'll maybe I'll get like proved wrong throughout the rest of the tasting, but I think that this is personally my favorite pumpkin beer of all time. And Our, I look forward to the day that it comes out every year, and then I search it down. So fun little factoid: we had this beer. We we love this beer. We're not gonna even beat around the bush. And we had mm -hmm. it um, about two weeks ago. We were on the road and saw someplace had it way earlier than we expected yeah so we had one then and it was just like it's one of those things where you know you when something's good 
and then you don't have it for a while and you're like oh well i'd be disappointed and then no you have it mm -hmm. and you love it it but always takes let's go yeah. through the official process okay i i already tried it oh <laughs> Four jack-o'-lanterns. Oh, yeah. All the way. I can't even... I'll give it five. So, you can't. Okay. I only got four. Wow. Um, so, like, tell people about, like, the the taste, the everything about okay. it. So, it's a it's a lighter color than the masthead one was, and I think it's a, it's about the same color as the cold brew one and the um, pumpkin one were. Um, but, yeah, it's... When you smell it, you smell pumpkin, you smell the spices... But it's not overwhelming, and then when you taste it, you taste pumpkin, but it's not sweet. Yeah, it's uh, described as pumpkin pie in a glass, and it really it, that's what it is. Yeah. I, she says it's not sweet. I think if you are really averse to sweets, you you will think it is a little yeah. sweet, but it's not for for how much flavor it has. It's not overwhelmingly sweet. It does clock in at eight point six percent, so definitely it's a uh, it's billed as an imperial pumpkin ale. Um, so with that said, you can't have too many of those. But and that it's one's delicious. always fun. Like at a bar, you can recognize like the tap handle because it has the pumpkin like on the very top, and it just looks like so in your face. Just how this tastes. Yeah. All right. Where's we'll... these out? Oh, I'm excited for this one. Go ahead and tell them what it is. All right, I'm still rinsing these. But this one that we're going to try next is also by Southern Tier, and it is Warlock. Warlock is basically pumpkin, but in the stout form. So it's a imperial pumpkin stout. Um, it does not say that it's pumpkin pie in a glass, but this is limited, so... It's not as, like, Pump Kings are headliner, and then all these other ones are, like, the small ones that they feature throughout the season. Yeah, I'm trying to think, have, and I, I'm just asking you, and this could be totally wrong, but have you seen that, the uh, Pumpkin um, Cold Brew one before that we had at the beginning? I think is so, that like, new, last or is that... year we were in Cleveland for Jessica's wedding, and we went to, we went to the brewery, so we went to Southern Tier, and... I remember being so excited, like, we went with my parents, and I was like, all right, we have to go try all of the pumpkin beers, like, all of the different variations of pumpkin, and literally that day, I think they were out of almost every single one, and the cold brew one was one of the ones I wanted to try that day, and it was gone. So it was the original pumpkin, like, that's how popular that beer is, is that everyone just, like, drinks it up, and that was the beginning of September. So, okay, let's all right, try this. cheers. Cheers. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. I haven't had that in so long. Like, I don't think I had it all at all last year. I don't think I had it at all last year either. <laughs> We're like... <laughs> La as you... Ha if you watch our... Uh, or listen to our podcast on the regular, you know we're pretty busy during the fall. And I think last year was one of the falls where, like... We've talked about it before. Last fall, we didn't get out as much mm -mm. as we usually do. So, don't, I don't know if I had this last year. But what, right, you want to do scores? Yeah. I want one more sip to really, like, get that score. All right. Okay. Three, two, one. You can't give it a seven? I didn't. I gave it a 3.5. What? 3.5 jack oh, that, oh, that's not even seven. That's eight. <laughs> yep. The pumpkin. Um, <laughs> Beer number five. No, uh, <laughs> I thought I I love it and it was if you like stouts and darker beers, this is your beer if you're looking for a pumpkin beer because it is yeah. it has all those traditional like stout type dark notes. It's oaty, it's um It's really good. I will say it's about 80 something degrees here today. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we're outside right now. Um, trying to get through these before they get warm. Um but yeah, it's it's perfect for a cold fall day. Mm -hmm. Like, absolutely perfect for a cold fall day. Um, it tastes great right now because, I, again, I haven't had it in, like, two years. But I wouldn't drink it 
on another 80 degree fall day. So would... what you're telling me between the two, Pumpkin is your September beer. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. The and Warlock, Warlock is, is your October. October beer. Mm-hmm. You must find you a November beer then. Do you have water over here? Maybe that could be the cold brew one. Yeah. All right. We dump you some water and we can go on to the next one. All right. You were just talking about this one. Do you want to show it to the camera? I uh, you can. I just want oh. you to see the name of it. You know, I, I'm I'm not that blind. It is the Voodoo Ranger Atomic Pumpkin, and I think this is a spicy pumpkin beer, right? Like, I haven't had it in a very long time, if ever. But let's take a look. So uh, while she looks it over, mm -hmm. Voodoo Ranger is from New Belgium. They are in Colorado and Fort Collins. And they, if you ever make your way out to the Denver area, take the hour trip out to Fort Collins and go visit this brewery. It's one of so the cool. it's one of the coolest breweries I've ever been to. I've been to a bunch of them. Um, it's just a, an awesome operation they have there. And they make really good beer. So I'm excited for this one. Yeah, so this beer is a pumpkin beer, pumpkin ale brewed with pumpkin, cinnamon, and chilies. So I think you're going to like it. I think you'll like it, too. I will. We love spicy beer. Yeah, I think... We love everything spicy. Again, if you've listened to the fish fry before, you know that we like spicy things. And this should be right up our alley, so... It doesn't smell spicy. Maybe I didn't pour enough. Did you... Did yours smell spicy? Well, sometimes things don't smell spicy, but they can have... Let's give it a taste. Now I'm getting the spice. Yep, that's delicious. So I'll go ahead and start talking about it while she keeps drinking it. <laughs> people hear spicy and some people hate spice, some people love it, and some people are somewhere in between. The spice to this is there, but it's not overwhelming. I love spicy stuff. One of my favorite beers of all time is Ballast Point's Habanero Sculpin. That you feel in the back of your throat after each sip. <laughs> this you don't. So if you're looking for something to knock your socks off, light them on fire, spicy, this is not it, but it's still really good. And it's actually yeah. really kind of, um, it's refreshing in a way because so many of these pumpkin beers, you know, I mean like, they, they have so many parallels to them. They all have, like, the, like, you know, nutmeg, clove, pumpkin yeah. to it. And this one kind of sets itself apart because it has that the, the, a little bit of a burn. I think this might be the only spicy one out there. I could S be wrong. Somebody should change that. Yeah. I hope I find someone that, ha that has changed that. I've always heard that, this is a little side note, that brewers hate pumpkin beer because it's a pain in their butt to make. It requires so much pumpkin if you want oh. to use actual pumpkin to impart the flavor. That's probably why they do it for like two months a year and then just like done. Yeah. And I don't think anyone would really drink it in January. Yeah. Maybe. But even like when you get closer to Thanksgiving, we were talking about this last night. Like when you get closer to Thanksgiving, you don't see as many pumpkin beers. And like what's a Thanksgiving beer? So with that, someone, if you're a brewer out there or know a brewer, Someone should make a Thanksgiving specific beer because a lot of people on Thanksgiving <laughs> bring wine to Thanksgiving dinner yeah. and people like us typically bring beers to Thanksgiving dinner. And if it, I'm up, if I'm left to my own devices, I'll bring an IPA. But if I had a Thanksgiving beer. But like, what would a Thanksgiving beer be to you? Because you hated my suggestion. <laughs> I don't know. It's up to the brewers. I'm not. I don't know how to brew beer. They just make it and like do like let us know. But do you guys think like a stuffing flavored beer would be good? <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I think it would be delicious. Like Triscuit makes uh, like wheat thins that taste like Thanksgiving, and I think those are good. So like a beer would be good. Well, yeah, wheat thins are different than drinking stuff. Like the Triscuits are good. Oh yeah, Triscuit and wheat thins are different. But like Triscuit, like yeah. the squares, yeah, those they have a Thanksgiving one. It's not formally Thanksgiving. It's like rosemary and olive oil, but it tastes just like stuffing. And stuffing's my favorite side dish. So we're getting off track. Yep. <laughs> we're good at that. Okay. Uh, rinse those out. And I will grab the next one. 
I think we're going into uncharted territory. Ooh. That, like, what's going on with the top of that one? It's, like, falling know. out. It's probably because it's really hot out. All right. Introduce it to people, and then I'll show it. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but I think I do. The Weyerbacher uh, Imperial Pumpkin Ale. Right. I could have totally butchered that. So we are bad, and I've seen this before. I have, I know nothing about it, so I'm pretty excited um, mm-hmm. to try this because I know it's been around for I don't know how long, but I've seen it for a while. Um, it's an imperial <clears throat> pumpkin ale. It's brewed with pumpkin spices that include cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, and cloves. Oh, so it's similar to our apple, Gordy's apple cider spice mix. Somewhat, yes, just because yeah. it has cardamom. <laughs> um, and it clocks in at 8%, so it's an imperial and it has some funky foam at the top. Do like my question for brewers is can you make a pumpkin beer that's less than 7%? Because I think all of these have been over seven. I saw so when I was picking these out the other day, I saw one that was like s- astonishingly low. It was like in like the five percent range, and I thought that's gonna be super thin bodied and Yeah, I feel like it has to be heavy to make it worth a pumpkin so you're looking ideally for like um like maybe like a six percent beer it'd be great but yeah um all right i would still want to be flavorful so wait we didn't score the voodoo oh my gosh we just got so excited about the spice that we didn't score it all right um you ready yeah three two one so oh three yeah three I would definitely order that if it was on the menu. But, like, if you put that pumpkin and the cold brew one on the menu together, I would go with the other two before I went with the Voodoo Ranger one. I gave the Voodoo Ranger a four. I thought the uh, their, their atomic pumpkin was delicious. And, again, going back to it's refreshing to have something spicy and just kind of, like, cuts through the pumpkinness yeah. a little bit. So. I would definitely order it. All right, All now right. on to our current beer, the Waybacher. Yep, okay. Cheers. Cheers. Smells Whoa. really, really good and really pumpkin-y. Yeah. Yeah. That tastes like That's pumpkin. amazing. Uh-oh. Southern Tier might Yikes. have a run for its money. Like, that's delicious. That's crazy, because we've seen that so many we've times. We've had it we've at some it. point in our eight years of doing pumpkin runs and drinking pumpkin beer alongside of it. Right? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe we've always passed it up and it was the one that just got left behind. All right. Let's, before we forget, let's score it. All right. Are you ready? They just found out what it is, but yeah. One, two, three, go. (gasps) Wow. Go. You explain your perfect score (laughs) for jack-o'-lanterns. What? Why? Because when the smell... It smells very pumpkin-y, very good. Taste. Doesn't taste too heavy. Tastes just, and just like, light enough, but also, like, thick enough that it is still a pumpkin beer. Um, yeah, I would definitely order this again. I think we're going to run out of room in that. Like, yeah, I know. Card. I was thinking we have so to think probably have drink, to drink it. it. Um, so my three, I would, I think my reasoning is that it's really good and i think if you're going to have one beer and you're sitting there and you just want to have one single beer and it just smack you in the face with pumpkins this is it this is a good one um but it is a little over the top to me and i think and like, especially let's tell them though like you don't like you don't like sweets you don't like desserts you don't like pie candy ice cream anything fun so <laughs> Would it? Would it? So be f- this would be like too. This is like all right. I can like treat myself, kind of have a sweet, and then you're done. Would it be fair to say if someone likes like sweets and wants like that, like really good, you know? Yeah, this beer, like this would is, be. This is a good option. Yeah, you could drink this all night, um, without your stomach hurting. All right. Well, like you said, unfortunately, our little bowl is almost full. So bottoms up. Cheers. So good. 
Yeah. It's Did you fine. go to Paolo to drink that? <laughs> um, side note while I finish this, in case anyone <laughs> has eagle eyes, this says the Great Pumpkin Run 2013. So back before Gordy's, Throwback. when we were the Great Pumpkin Run, we had these glasses made back in 2013. Mm-hmm. And it's still around. Yep. Shout out to mom and dad for keeping it because we don't even have one. All right. Just a little bit of water so we don't overflow it. And we are on to our final beer, and then it's bedtime. <laughs> I've never seen this one before. No. Okay. Introduce it. Oh. Almost knocked that over. Um, this is the O'Fallon pumpkin beer. It this is one of the lighter ones, Eric. Good job. It's five point six percent, and I've never seen it before. So let's let's give this one a whirl. So when I was at the store, I must have said, "Ooh, five point six percent. Not getting that." And then I got it. So, yeah. Great. Good job. So, the O'Fallon Pumpkin Beer. Do you have any idea where they are out of, Courtney? Does it say? Nope, it says we love beer. <laughs> um, St. Louis County. So, uh, Maryland Heights, Missouri. Missouri. You know who we did not include, speaking of Missouri, is Schlafly's Pumpkin. <gasps> That's one of our favorites. But... Moving on. Okay, to we're this, gonna this... have to get a Schlafly. I don't. Do... Before we go home to New York, we're going to need to see if Schlafly distributes to New York, and if they do, all is well, and we can do the next pumpkin tasting and include Schlafly. Yep. But if they do not, we have to pick up Schlafly before we go, out, oh, like out of the state and over the do borders. Do they distribute here in Ohio? Yeah. Oh. I think well. so. I think I've seen it down on like at your dad. So. All right, anyways, All right. O'Fallon. All right, Cheers. O'Fallon pumpkin beer. Do you want to... Sorry for the moment of silence. Uh, we've been tasting this, and I've been reacting on camera. I'll, I'll start. Ready? One, two, three... <laughs> All right, Court, tell us why. And be nice. Not, I'm being nice. Like, I'm sure they make really good other beers, but this is compared to the lineup we have in front of us. I think that this is the not the best one. So, I don't I, like the word worse because nothing's <clears throat> ever the worst in, in life. Everything, something's always worse, right? Right? So, I think. Something that you're leaving out, though, is that we did start with all bigger, heavier, full-bodied beers, and we ended, and this wasn't by design. This we were actually stupid and not put <laughs> look at the labels. Um, we ended with a very light one, and, you know, that's kind of like with any tasting. You don't really want to end with a mm -hmm. light beer. So um, You want to end with a heavier, and we should have started with this one, so that is our fault. Yeah. Um, as far as, like, notes go, I mean, it, it is very light-bodied, it's a beautiful color, and it just doesn't have a lot of, like, the pumpkin flavor, and that's, it. like, it's not, like, I bad by any means, it just doesn't it's have It's similar to, flavor. like, I want to say it's, like, a lighter version of the pumpkin, like, the second one from Dogfish Head, because it's, like, similar color, and you can smell the, like, this, like, you can smell the pumpkin, but when you go to taste it, you, it's not as, it's not as, like, prevalent. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah, and, it's and lighter, again, and that's like again we were saying we want a lighter pumpkin now, so maybe this is it. So maybe I should give it a two. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I, I think I think it's not bad by any, no. any stretch. It's just not as flavorful as the other ones, but again, it is definitely lighter. So it's it, it serves a purpose for sure because we were talking about it in this episode that there's not a lot of lighter ones out there. So. That's true. So. Cool. All right. well, well, we're out of space in that bowl, so I'm gonna drink it anyway. So I guess that officially gives it a two. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, we had a blast. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys learned something. Um, there's definitely a lot of good pumpkin beers out there. Again, these are the eight that we randomly selected. Um, you would think that, oh, are they getting paid by Southern Tier for this? Nope. Um, no. They make great beer. <laughs> Um, we will do. We will. I think we should do this again in October. Yeah, we will. With East Coast pumpkin pumpkin beers. We can do that. 
So in the meantime, um, again, the pumpkin beer season season is just getting started. So, you know, it's a great way after you do your virtual 5K or really any night of the week uh, to celebrate. Cheers and have a pumpkin ale. Cool. Sign us off. All right. We will see you guys next Friday. Thank you so much for joining us and cheers to the weekend. Cheers.